Hello, my name is Desiree Thomas and I am a Youth Services Librarian at Worthington Libraries. So today I'm going to tell you about a couple of titles that have really been um, instrumental in me enjoying my summer and hopefully these will be beneficial to you as well. The first title that I would like to share with you is They Call Us Enemy by George Takai. Now, many of you probably know George Takai from his work in Star Trek. But what you may not know about George is that he and his family were interned in a Japanese prisoner of war camp in America. So this book, other than being really well illustrated and beautiful, really does touch on the intricacies of what it felt like to spend time in internment camps in America when you are an American and the way they were treated. Um, if you didn't already love George Takai, you will definitely love him after reading this book. Again, this is definitely for your high school reader. There's some pretty serious topics that get covered, but you also get to see how George grows up and you get to know his family. So it is a mix of joy and sadness and a history lesson. Again, that title is They Called Us Enemy by George Takai. The next title that I would like to share with you is Given by Nandi Taylor. So Yeni Anjali is a Yoruba princess and she's destined to marry a prince from another country, but she really kind of sort of doesn't want to because the prince she's supposed to marry wants her to have a traditional role and she is a warrior and a fighter. And also her father has fallen ill and no one seems to be able to figure out what is actually causing this illness. So Yeni takes it upon herself to travel to a distant land and get schooling to, in order to be able to learn healing practices that will help her father. When she gets to this untry, other country, however, she meets a dragon named Wayesh. Now, Wayesh tells Yeni that she is his given. Dragons believe that they are bonded for life and they'll know their person as soon as their scent hits them. So the first time they meet, she sees him standing in the crowd and she's looking at him like, why are you staring at me? And all of a sudden, there's a dragon out of nowhere. Now, when she sees him the first time, he's in human form, okay? He's in human form. And she's like, this dude's big. He's kind of strong looking, but why is he staring at me? And then all of a sudden, there is this beautiful, gorgeous, violet-colored dragon who picks her up, looks at her, kind of hugs her to him. And she's like, okay, let me kill you right now. And she does kind of try to hurt him. He changes back into human form and it's like, hey, we're going to get married now, right? And she's kind of like, if you step close to me, I'll use my swords on you. So into this mix, however, she gets into this academy, which is super wonderful. And it's really reminiscent of, think of Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone that first year where she's a novice. She doesn't understand anything about this new country that she's in. She's making all sorts of mistakes. And then you got Wyesh the dragon, who's basically trying to court her, but she's really not feeling him. And now they're starting to become friends. And he may be the key to figuring out what is wrong with her father. Again, that title is Given by Nandy Taylor. The next title that I have for you, I don't have a physical copy because I was lucky enough to get a digital copy, but it will be available to you, is Charming as a Verb by Ben Phillips. 
Now, if you've read The Field Guide to the North American Teenager by him, you'll know his type of humor. So Henry Haltwanger is a charming teen entrepreneur. He uses his smile as currency, and he's created a shell company in order to boost his dog walking business. So everything is about him being able to make extra money using this shell company. And he gives good service, but basically the way he does it is to write these reviews and stiff arm the competition so nobody else, no other dog walking service can get involved. He's also on the debate club because he loves debating. And his whole goal is to make it into Columbia University in New York. Well, he lives in an apartment where his dad is the supervisor or, you know, the super who, you know, fixes things when things go wrong. And there is another teenager in that building who goes to the same school that he does. And he just lucks out and ends up becoming her family's dog walker. But they do not get together well. She's very, very straight laced, very focused, all about her grades, all about studying. In a word, she's super, super intense. And he told her that she was super intense. Well, she goes to an interview for uh, an internship. And the response from that interview was that she was too intense. She figures out that he's made this shell company. And she basically kind of sort of blackmails him into showing her how to be more social and more approachable. The humor is off the charts. It is super funny and just quirky, a really good read. So if you have readers who like funny books, Charming as a Verb is perfect for you. The next title that I would like to share with you is The Voting Booth by Brandy Colbert. So Duke Crenshaw has been waiting to vote forever. He just turned 18. So he just knows he's going to vote and he shows up to vote and he gets denied. So his normal inclination is just to walk away, even though this is something that his brother who had passed away was a champion of. Like, you got to vote, you got to vote, you got to vote, you got to vote into this mix. He's right there. He's just gotten turned away. Marva Sheridan, she's a voting advocate. It's like, hold up, freeze. Wait a minute. There are things that we can do. So let's figure out where you can vote. So the two of them partner up. Duke is carefree, laid back. At least he appears to be laid back. Marva is type A all the way, straight laced as they come. So it's a, a, a opposites meeting. And what I really like about the voting booth is number one, it's a good primer on the voting process, on the things that you can do. So you learn about absentee voting, you learn about same day voting, you learn about finding out what your polling location is. You learn about what kinds of um, identification you need to vote. So it's that, but it is also the most tender, sweet romance that was not intended to happen because at the beginning of the story, Marva has another guy. So I'm going to leave that there. Again, that title is The Voting Booth by Brandy Colbert. So the next title that I would like to share with you, and I've been reading a lot this summer, so um, I want to share this book with you, however. The book that I have for you is This Train is Being Held by Ismay Williams. So what you have here is Isabel Warren, and then you've got Alex Rosario, okay? So they meet on a subway train. Now, Alex is Dominican and a 
foot baseball phenom. Like everything about him is baseball. He eats, sleeps, and breathes it. Mainly because his father, who made it to the big leagues but had trouble dealing with drugs and ended up being out of the league, is pushing Alex to become the next next one to get drafted. And then you have Ismay Williams, who is a dancer extraordinaire, who basically uses dance in order to kind of sort of self-medicate from the mental illness that's affecting her mom and her older brother. These two meet and it's like kismet. But Ismay's mom does not want her to be with anyone else who's like Dominican or from the wrong side of the tracks. But Alex holds space for Isabel. Oh, and it is so beautiful. He writes her poems, okay? And then he hides those poems on the subway, on a seat so that she can find them. How cute is that? Um, but they have to learn how to be vulnerable with each other and not put up facades. Again, sweet, tender romance. Also, a lot about mental illness and dealing with that. So again, that title is This Train is Being Held by Ismay Williams. All of these titles are available to you through Overdrive or Hoopla, which are our digital platforms. But also, you can reserve them and pick them up curbside appointments or through Northwest drive through window. Um, I hope that you are well and that you're safe. And I hope that you'll get some of these fabulous titles. It has been a joy to read them and it's a joy to share them. Thank you so, so much.